I am here with Sam Hunt, another cast member from Time Fracture. Hello. Samuel Hunt. Samuel sorry. Hunt. Sorry. Oh, of course. Yes. Sorry. Uh, I'm just saying what the email said. There we go. There we go. <laughs> well, first of all, immersive theatre. Mm-hmm. Let us speak before we go to Time Fracture. Immersive theatre. How would you best describe immersive theatre? Um, I think people have been to immersive theatre without realising it. I think um, for a lot of people, their first interaction of immersive theatre is something like Disneyland mm. as soon as you walk through those gates you enter a completely different world that is a world that is tactile, that is a world that you can play in, that is a world where you can interact with people uh, and at heart that is what immersive theatre is it is a, an environment where you enter a storyline you literally cross over a threshold or even before then uh, it's from the point you buy your ticket you're in the world um, you're interacted with uh, Different levels of immersive theatre have different levels of interaction, uh, but the world around you completely changes and it's completely different to the outside world. Oh, that's perfect. That's, that's a there. great um, description of it. And uh, adding on to that, how much experience have you had personally before here with immersive theatre, other than Disney? <laughs> other than Disney. Lots other of Disney. Other than the mouse. Um, a lot, actually. Uh, I trained uh, at drama school. I did acting, but I did contemporary theatre, so it was a lot about devising work, creating new work, uh, and creating work in very unusual spaces. Uh, so that was a big part of my training 10 years ago. And then since then, I've worked on numerous immersive shows uh everything from uh repeated sequences of like five minutes over and over again for three hours straight to big pieces such as doctor time fracture uh, i've done the great gatsby for a year and a half the wolf of wall street um and various other things so it's been a, a large part of my career over the last 10 years doing immersive theater which wow, is no wonder you're here <laughs> and on those lines how did you become part of the Time Fracture family? Well, I wasn't an original member of the Time Fracture family. Um, So uh, I had a very strange four days uh, in the fact that uh, the rest of the cast did all the rehearsal period uh, and they were starting their previews and everything like that. I think they got two weeks into previews. uh, And my agent called me up on a Friday night around six o'clock and they were like, hi, they want your measurements right now. I was like, okay, so I'm running around at nine o'clock at night whilst doing a bar shift at the same time. Oh God. Trying to find a measuring tape, measuring myself in a stock room and everything like that. Uh, and then over the period of the next two days, did two show watches, a costume fitting, 45 minutes rehearsal, and then went straight on stage. Wow. To just, they, I think they just needed some, another character, another person just to fill in certain parts just to help the, the running of the show. Uh, so yeah, so I, I got it easy. I didn't have to do any rehearsals at all. Really. <laughs> just stepped in. It was good fun. So you yeah. say that, but the two I just had, Simon and Jess, mm-hmm. both said, well, Simon specifically said, oh yeah, and it was like a few days before. I just sort of jumped in. Yep. So it's the same as you. And then both of them, how did you think your audition went personally? So I auditioned for it originally in the October. Mm-hmm. Um, which was great fun. Again, it's uh, one of those auditions where it's a workshop, so you're, like, you're improvising, you're given a scenario. Uh, one of the great things we had to do, I think we were given a plant, and we had to... This plant wasn't a plant, it was something else, and we had to interact with it, and we had an audience member with us, uh, and the whole scene had to revolve around this plant, which was wonderful. Um, there was other things where uh, you had to play sort of like a Doctor S character, or a, a unit scientist, or a, a unit soldier, or stuff like that, and it's just about being in the moment and just bringing the world alive, really. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's an interesting audition. Uh, you're on your feet a lot, running out. It's more than sort of you, you've got oh. a panel. Hello. 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 Out Hello. of the shadows. Hello, Martin. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, come on in. Come on in. We can I'll readjust. Yeah. And suddenly there was a Bethany. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> now Bethany, I was told that you were out on the lash. <laughs> it was a cast member's birthday party, so exuberance mm. was had a little bit. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. Then no hard feelings. <laughs> well, we were just talking about the audition, but I'm going to change the subject a little bit about the characters because you can play multiple characters I didn't realise this until I think I saw your Instagram story mm-hmm. where it's just like on this day I'm playing this so what uh, I'll start with you I suppose what characters do you play in the show uh, so I play uh, Queen Elizabeth and a Time Lord guide um, you are truly the master of the multi-rolling ones <laughs> I, for, for most of us we just play two and we alternate each night between them um, for multi multi rollers like multi-roll. so I'm swing so um, I I do have two sort of like main roles, which is George, who's a roaming scientist in unit, or I play a sideman, but uh, I cover, so I'm an understudy for another, hang on, 
Let's go through this. <laughs> Yates, Sullivan, Brian. Time to guide one, two, three, four, five. So many guides. Um, who else do I play? Daleks. Yeah. About to take on the. Spoilers. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> I'll bleep that out. <laughs> no, uh, the Gallifrey Guide. Yeah, so we're around 11 characters in total. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> All up here. Oh, yeah, no, easy. Yeah. Easy to do. No. <laughs> well, to be fair, you're the, as you were saying, you're so experienced and you're amazing. As he was just telling me all about mm. this, you see. He's so modest, isn't he? He, he just is. But, uh, <laughs> well, out of, out of those, I suppose you'll find this easier. What character is your favourite to play? Oh, that's, um, they're both really fun in their own ways. I think Queen Elizabeth might just take it ever so slightly because um, you just kind of, people are brought to you and you sort of do this, do that, <laughs> entertain me. Um, Cause it really is a mixture of like poised regal queen and then queenie. So it's sort uh, of like yeah. bloodthirst. Yay, I like that. And it's like really quite <laughs> oh, Is there a bit too. of Blackadder queenie? Oh, very much queenie. Oh, it's yes. the Blackadder queenie. So it's like, ta-da, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, there we go. And how about you out of your dozen? <laughs> um, I, I, I think that's partly why I enjoy being Swing and Undersea. The fact that there's just the variety of just playing different characters every single night. Um, so like, yeah, like Instagram stories, like literally, one night and playing Yates, the next night and playing Brian, and then I'm a TLG, and then I'm a Sideman, and I, that's I just love it. You just get to explore the world through different eyes of lots of different people, so and it keeps it fresh, which is really nice. And I mean, the audience do that in itself; like they just uh, no two nights are ever the same mm. in Time Fracture uh, for many reasons. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I can't choose one. Out of no. Very sad. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm just going to slap a picture on screen, and that's your favourite. I've decided. Thank you very much. It's going to be the queen. That, that, but, was, that was a bold choice. I was trying to get in Queenie's dress. Everyone, like, the amount everyone. of people are buying for that. They're like, one day, I'll... I'll like. Well, before I leave, <laughs> <laughs> I'll sneak backstage. Anyway, uh, well, I'd look great. But um, now, I was talking about uh, this with you earlier, about knowledge of the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, how much did you know going in, and how much did you have to learn? So, for me, I've been a Doctor Who fan for 26 years. You have won over the audience with that one <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Since I was seven, six, seven years old. Uh, so when I was around six, my uncle was a big fan. Uh, I very vividly remember being in their house seeing like all their, their Dalek Daypole toys. My dad made them a, a Comet Dalek kit, uh, all the VHSs and everything like that. And then when my uncle was, when I was seven, my uncle uh, sadly passed away. Um, but he'd already got me into Doctor Who. He'd already given me a VHS of a uh, Nightmare of Eden filmed on UK Gold huh. uh, so that was my very first entry Doctor Who and then sadly when he passed away he gave me a load of VHS as well and I just worked my way through classic Doctor Who um, and yeah so I've got my own fandom taken forwards I've got his fandom I take with me as well uh, I've worked in uh, retail to do Doctor Who I've done yeah so all over the shop so I had a lot of knowledge going in, which is probably why I could get away with 45 minutes rehearsal for my first show. <laughs> yeah, I bet that audition was interesting. Oh, do you want me to play this character? Maybe a bit of this character? He's like, yeah, okay, you're in, God. <laughs> How about you? How much did you know going in? Um, I didn't actually grow up in the UK, so I didn't grow up with it as sort of a staple, like I think a lot of people did, but I'd come back over Christmases and I think did the thing that a lot of people who sort of had it in their background, like watch the Christmas specials. Oh, yeah. um, and I'd be told the stories from my mom and my dad and like, oh, and the Daleks, oh God, hiding behind the couch <laughs> from the Cybermen. And I think a lot of people's parents have those stories about growing up with it. Yeah. So you hear that. And then um, when I got the audition and then the job, um, I obviously just kind of absolutely missioned myself, like immersed myself, watched everything. Um, and it's just brilliant. Mm. The storylines, are fantastic like watching the really really early stuff I was just blown away with how awesome the writing was and also just like the sets and the props was glorious <laughs> as well like I mean, comparing the classics to where we're sitting now, yeah. even that is truly bizarre how mm. we've managed to get to this. I mean, the, seeing it on camera, it does not do it justice. Sitting in it <laughs> is bizarre, especially because there's spoilery things out of frame. Ooh, yes. <laughs> well, I say spoilers, it's in every picture. Um, <laughs> can't read my own writing. There we go. Well, with the show being so different all the time, uh, and all these revolving guests and different characters being played, there has got to be some ridiculous either behind-the-scenes stories of, like, <laughs> rapid changing in costume or 
interesting guest stories where they're like either too into it or they're not into it enough. So tell me, what's what's some favourite stories? I can see the smiles growing. What can we say? Oh, God. Um, um, with being, still being kind, of, of course. Of course, no, absolutely. absolutely. There was this one, di- no. But, um, I can definitely think of, um, this one happened quite recently and was just glorious, where I was full on serenaded with a song by Enrique Iglesias, like sort of, um, I will be your hero baby. <laughs> And like, so this was to the queen. And he was like, I am a master singer and songwriter. And here is a song of my people from Enrique Iglesias. From and my t- people. Yeah, it was this, it was, yeah he, he was endowed as a lord of such a land. And blah, blah, blah. so he really got into this part and was just fully committed and serenaded me. Oh, well, did the queen like it? Oh, very much. Oh, this? yes, I loved it. <laughs> he kept his head. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> well, Sam, how about you? Uh, I, I think for me, there was very much, it was very impulsive and on a whim. It's when the unit scientists managed to make their way through the time fracture into the rest of the show. Oh, that was very fun. So they went rather rogue and um, rogue. when the audience <laughs> went through the time fracture, spoilers. Um, I think that's a given. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, some of the three scientists went with them uh, and found themselves Ooh. in the court of Queen Elizabeth and an alien market and into the future and beyond. Were you queen at that point? I was not. I was a time guide at that point, which was amazing because then we sort of had these handovers of audience members that the scientists had been with over to me and you can just really play some beautiful parts. There was this girl, um, her name was Beth, which was amazing. I was like, Beth, nice. we both had pigtails and we were like, mate. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I've just been exploring. I've come from Queen Elizabeth's court. And she went, oh, pulls up her shirt. And she's got like all the Tudor kings and queens and Queen Elizabeth. And I was like, I know where I'm taking you. <laughs> and because you know the timings of this show like that, came straight into Queen Elizabeth's court as the queen is coming out. So she's presented and we get messages from each other from backstage. So we kind of, we know who to look for maybe or to have these moments with people. And Charlie, who was take, playing the queen, had had this note about Beth. So I was able to address this small girl at, with her name excellent. and have this little moment. And this girl was just and was curtsying. It was the sweetest thing in the world. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, just went all the way through with her. It was great. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that must be the fun part as well. Like, you hone in on those people. I mean, cosplayers are an easy get. Cosplay, like, there are so many cosplayers coming in, which is absolutely beautiful. We've had everything from, obviously, <laughs> David Tennant. Um, we've had numerous Romanas come in. Um, we've had, obviously, McCoys, Jodies. Uh, we had Tom Bakers. Uh, Tom Bakers. We had one um, from the Happiness Patrol. Really? I think one someone came as uh, one of the um, oh, the, uh, the in the pink the uh, not Daisy K it's, yes Daisy K um, we have a centurion full on yes c- full Roman. on cent- Roman centurion that must have confused the other guests yes <laughs> yeah. we've had someone cosplay someone from the show uh, which is brilliant that must just be baffling um, yeah. they clearly want a specific route just like you can see what I'm coming for. <laughs> It was the fatal, the curse of the fatal costume, wasn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. yours yeah, was yeah, inspired yeah. by uh, the Rowan Atkinson. Yeah. Uh, when I saw that one. poster, I was so confused because I was like, I know that costume. That's so specific. <laughs> what? And I was like, no, that that can't be right. And I was so happy when I when I saw it in person. I was like. <laughs> I got very lucky seeing that one because you won't always see the same person. <laughs> I'm speaking like I'm an expert. I've been once and I'm here. <laughs> well, we're on to our final question. As, as fun as this has been, it mm-hmm. must come to, a, come to a close. I brought the jacket. And I must know, in your short interaction with me, because I, I sent my CV in, I got ghosted, but I sent my CV in hoping for an audition. It never came, you see. So I'm curious to know, from your perspectives, what character... Would, would best suit this mess of a human. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel you're trying to influence us with I know the, the scientist jacket. Like, I mean, yeah. either way, I don't mind. <laughs> what, whatever you think. What, what energy am I giving off, Sam? So I'd say definitely like scientists, yeah. but you've also got that fun energy of a Time Lord guy yeah. to be like, come with me on an adventure. I totally agree with that. Yeah. I totally yeah. agree with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. I think if you're going to be in the show, I think you're Dr. Yates portrait guide. That's your Ooh, casting. Oh, I could see that one. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, I like that. You made it. Yes! <laughs> That's actually, this is actually just a whole ploy to this get employed. This is now your audition. Yeah, yeah this is... <laughs> oh, no. Now. Where's the plant? Get the plant out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming along. It's, it's been great to chat to you two. And I just hope the other two show up. Fingers crossed. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. No, 